it's time to explore the great indoors. Pirates ahead, all hands on deck and ready the cannons. Where imagination has no boundaries. And then the princess rode the dragon. And fun is limitless. Captain, we're ready for liftoff. Explore the great indoors with Eagle Communications with TV and internet starting at $84.99 for two years. Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. And as usual, thanks as always to the producer and editor of our series, Brandon Cooley. We're in the studios of Eagle Community Television for our connection with Dr. Jennifer bonds Rackey, Professor of Psychology at Fort Hayes State University, Dean of the Graduate School as of May, and a President's Distinguished Scholar, and eight years now at Fort Hayes State University. Dr. bonds Rackey, let's begin, if we could, with the Graduate School as the new Dean now you have some pretty exciting news for us, I think. Yeah, we do, Mike. Thanks so much for having me here today as well. So um, I'm excited to share with you that this fall we have record high enrollment in the virtual college for our graduate programs. So we're really excited about that. Um, and we've also been working this fall semester to make the application process more user friendly for students. Um, so with some of the new technology that we have, students are able to upload their application materials through a portal and they can track the status of their application. So they can see if we've received their bachelor's transcript, they can see if we've received letters of recommendation, and even online they're able to review um, if they were accepted into the graduate program. So we're really excited to be able to offer that service to our prospective students. In addition to the on-campus graduate student program, right, Dr. Ray? Right, correct. So that, uh, that application portal that I was describing, that's for everyone. Mm -hmm. On-campus, virtual, domestic, international, even students who are non-degree seeking that maybe just want to come back and take a graduate course or two mm -hmm. without committing to pursuing that advanced degree, they can also use this portal. Well, tell me who are the graduates, the, the virtual graduate uh, students at Fort Hayes State then? What are, what's a, kind of a, a mix of background of those folks? Yeah, absolutely. There is no typical graduate student, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have students in a variety of disciplines. They're all ages, all different ethnic backgrounds. And I think that's what provides our students with that rich academic experience. The, uh, President's Distinguished Scholar Award came with a medallion, a $1,500 cash award, and a selection by a committee of previous scholars. The, the recognition here has got to be something that you're quite proud of, I would hope. I think I'm still in shock. <laughs> uh, I'm truly humbled and I don't quite yet view myself as um, being amongst my colleagues yet. <laughs> well, we have to uh, ask the obvious question, I think. Uh, what were the perimeters? How were you selected? What do you think were your attributes that caused that committee to say, yes, this is our newest distinguished scholar? Well, I'm hoping next year when I'm on the committee to understand a little bit better about how they make uh, their decisions in terms of who they select. But what I'm most proud of in terms of my scholarly contributions is that um, I have a passion and a commitment to involving students in my work. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that spoke to my committee that through different presentations or publications, they were able to see um, mm -hmm. how much I enjoy involving students and think that's important for their future success. So it's an overall package then basically, involving students uh, in the School of Psychology, involving uh, your work of research publications and uh, all-inclusive then, basically. Yes, I think so. Tell me about uh, the students in psychology. Um, talk about the, the psychology department itself. Okay, well, I'm really proud of the psychology department. We've grown a lot over the past eight years. Uh, when I first came to Fort Hayes, we had about 125 majors, and when I 
when I moved to the graduate school in May, we were over 600. So, wow. yes, it has expanded. We are offering new programs, uh, grown in faculty. I love the students in the psychology department and across campus. Um, the students in the psychology department, though, are really committed to how they can help others. Mm -hmm. And that might be through the research that they do. It might also be working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Um, but so that, that commitment and passion is there. I always like to ask our educators too, what fields, and you kind of touched on this a little bit, what fields can uh, students go into? Uh, you know, how do they benefit from a degree in psychology at Fort Hayes State? I think that's one of the things that is so surprising to psychology majors is a lot of times students think they're interested in psychology because they have this view of a therapist in mind. Mm -hmm. And certainly that is part of what psychologists do, but it's not all that psychologists can do. Mm -hmm. So my background, for example, is in cognitive experimental psychology. So I am interested in um, now, how we think. for the person, you're going right. to have to flesh that out <laughs> a little bit, Dr. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm interested in uh, how we process information. Um, and how, um, in particular, how what we view and see on the media impacts the way we think and act about mm. things. Wow. Right. So, and again, that's just one example of, of something mm. that you could do with psychology. But I will tell you, for psychology majors, they really need to be involved with research. Mm -hmm. Whether they're going right into the field or uh, continuing on to graduate school, graduate schools and future employers really want to see the things that you learn from research opportunities. So research important to basically broaden their educational process. Absolutely, right. It teaches them critical thinking skills, uh, confidentiality, mm -hmm. dependability, all of those things that are, are good lifelong skills to be successful. I guess too it would kind of help in that networking too, wouldn't it, Dr. Bonzraki? Absolutely, and that's my favorite part. You know, when we travel to conferences and students go with us, getting to connect them with others in the field, mm -hmm. um, and many times the faculty members that they meet from other institutions turn out to be faculty that they work with mm -hmm. on their graduate degree or that they collaborate with um, in the future as colleagues. Those conferences are really vitally important, aren't they? I've talked to so many of the educators at Fort Hayes State who say that uh, students gain so much from conferences. Yeah, they do. I think it um, moves what they've been learning in the classroom uh, to something theoretical to a reality, right? So they see it in action, they see it in practice for the first time. And normally when you take a student to a conference, you can kind of instantly tell if they're in the right major or they're not, you know, because uh -huh. if they're passionate about psychology and they go to that conference, you can see it click and they're really excited uh, and they, they get lots of ideas about what they want to do next. So really it, uh, it energizes them then, basically. Absolutely. And it energizes mm -hmm. faculty too. Yeah. One of those things that uh, I guess is homework for a distinguished scholar is a presentation which is coming this fall. Uh, it's going to be in the Stauffer Lounge, the Memorial Union, on the 28th of November at 3 o'clock, open to the public, right? Yes, correct. When you look at this presentation then, um, how do you select a topic? What do you do as far as a presentation which can reach faculty as well as perhaps the general public that would be interested in hearing your uh, your presentation. What? Uh, how do you go about selecting topic? Well, I didn't sleep for a month <laughs> as I was trying to decide what to talk about. Oh yeah, and then that's, that's homework. Isn't <laughs> it, it is, yeah. And then finally, I decided on two things. Um, one, I really wanted to share with people who were in attendance how students have been involved with my research. Mm -hmm. So um, I picked projects that students were involved with, projects that students contributed even to the de development of the idea. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I picked topics or uh, developed the presentation uh, really for the layperson who's attending so that they can understand uh, a little bit about what psychological research looks like. So there's there's no p-values. We're not going to talk about statistics or anything mm -hmm. like that. But we are going to talk about um, some research on how media impacts you. So we'll look at mm -hmm. things like Facebook stalking mm -hmm. or how viewing certain TV characters might change your attitudes towards minority groups and things like that. Wow, an exciting time just for lay people to be able to perhaps become more aware of the things they're taking in and to be able to process those then. Yeah, I think so. I mean, absolutely we are active in how we consume media and, and what we do with that information. And um, another 
point of my presentation, actually where I'm starting, is I was I had the opportunity to be involved with research as an undergraduate student. In fact, I was even involved with a project my freshman year, and I think that really shaped me. Um, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to work with faculty um, who invested in me and, and really wanted me to be successful, and as I looked back on all of my research, I wanted to be able to um, incorporate that journey into the presentation. And where was this? Where was your research? Yeah, so I received my undergraduate degree from Christian Brothers University in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh huh. Yeah. And from there, uh, the research, obviously from faculty at that particular uh, uh, location, uh, gave you the emphasis for uh, looking further in your own studies then. Yes, and one of the faculty members that I worked with was from Kansas, and she had uh, received her PhD from K-State. Mm -hmm. And so when I was looking at different graduate programs, she suggested uh, that I consider K-State. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I hopped in the car and we drove out to Manhattan, and I instantly loved uh, the campus and the faculty there. And so um, I was accepted into that program and, and earned my doctorate at K-State. And then moved to Fort Hayes, how'd that happen? Well, that's a little bit a longer of a process. <laughs> so when I graduated from uh, K-State, my first faculty position was at Briarcliff University. It's a small Catholic school in Sioux City, Iowa. And my husband and I both taught there for a few years. Um, and then we moved to North Carolina and we were at the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. And we were there for four years. But I must admit that our time in uh, Kansas really impacted us and we wanted to be back in the Midwest. And so we started looking for opportunities to come back to Kansas. And that's when I saw the, um, the job advertisement for chair of the psychology department. Take us back for just a moment, Dr. Bonzeracki, to your research itself. What did you gain from it? Hmm. How, did, uh, how did it impact you because of you know, you were in the same position many of the students are now at Fort Hayes State. What were the values you got from your research? So I think working with faculty on research definitely provided academic role models for me. Uh -huh. um, I am uh, one of the first ones in my family to get an advanced degree, and so having those role models was really important as I was navigating graduate school. Mm -hmm. Having someone to turn to and ask those questions, what are comprehensive exams, how does that work? Um, so that was really helpful. And some things that we talked about earlier, right? Learning responsibility, dependability, mm -hmm. um, the importance of confidentiality and, and knowing when you're um, using human subjects for research that you have a lot of ethical obligations and you need to take that seriously. Wow, the students are going to benefit greatly because you've been down that road of research and can kind of help them through some of the pitfalls as well as some of the benefits. Yeah, I hope so. Tell me about uh, the interest in psychology. How did that develop? Yeah, so it's not like I can look back on my life and pinpoint a, a time when I thought, oh, I really want to be a psychologist. Um, but rather, I took a psychology class, an AP course in high school, and I just fell in love with the content. I loved everything that we were learning about. It didn't matter if it was neuropsych and looking at how the brain works, mm -hmm. uh, two different types of therapy, whatever the topic was in that class, I loved it. Um, and I have found that to be the case, whether I was an undergrad or a graduate student, and it just seemed to click with me. And I didn't know what career I wanted to go into. That just kind of evolved over time as I learned about opportunities, but I knew there was something about that material that was a good fit for me. And this was back in the high school days? And, and into college, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And where was this? Uh, where was some of this early interest in psychology? In, uh, in the South? Right, so I am originally from Mississippi, and as I mentioned, I went to school in um, Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Distinguished Scholar presentation again will be at the Stauffer Lounge in the Memorial Union. It's going to be interesting to hear your approach of how we're dealing with all of the information coming at us now. I think this is going to be a very interesting part for the general public to hear as well as, of course, faculty and the students who will be involved in this presentation. 3 p.m. on the 28th uh, of November in uh, the Stauffer Lounge of the Memorial Union. Correct. <laughs> and uh, research of the Dean of Graduate School as of May, the President's Distinguished Scholar 
and now eight years at Fort Hayes State University and benefiting students in the Department of Psychology, the Professor of Psychology, Dr. Jennifer bonds Racky, our community connection. Hi, I'm Brandon Cooley, and I'm the Video Production Director at Eagle Marketing Solutions. We're a full-service production house. Service, to me, really is everything. I think it's very important that we show our clients that we really have their best interest in mind. Video is very engaging. It's really the best platform to tell your story. We pride ourselves on attention to detail, creative concepts, and fast turnaround. We're always working to find new ways to make our product better and to be able to just do what we can to help the client tell their story in the best way possible. Eagle Communications is your complete business solution with options to fit any budget. We provide business class phone with customizable features and fast, reliable internet. Your knowledgeable team at Technology Solutions has a broad base of IT services to meet your needs. Let the experts at Marketing Solutions get your message to the right people on the best platforms. Eagle Communications will build your personalized business plan. Call us at 877-61-EAGLE. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. And back again with us, our editor, producer, and scheduler of the series, Brandon Cooley from Eagle Community Television. We're in our studios with the Assistant Professor of Music and Theater at Fort Hayes State University and Music Director of the Hayes Symphony Orchestra, Shaw Sadikov, as we talk about uh, Shaw's latest uh, album, a new CD that we wanted to promote, and uh, maybe one of those uh, great Christmas gifts for your music fans, perhaps. Satikoff began playing the violin at age seven, studied at the Upensky State School of Music and the State Conservatory of Uzbekistan, holds a Bachelor of Music degree from Park University, Master's degree from the University of Kansas, and also Satikoff taught at Park University's Youth Conservatory. He is also a part of an international artists group, which we'll talk more about in just a few minutes. Let's uh, begin, if we could, with the uh, new album, uh, Shaw, and uh, the album called Stossel, Schumann, and Brahms. Did works get, by Stossel, works by. Did Schumann, and Brahms. Did I get that right? Yes, absolutely. Tell me about the inspiration for the CD. Um, inspiration came uh, from my residency in Germany, in North Westphalia, I lived, I was based in Detmold, Germany, where it's a small, small town. Uh, that's where Brahms started his career as a choral conductor. He was a young man, you know, he went from Hamburg to Detmold where the position opened and then he lived there for his early career. That's where he wrote some of his early masterpieces for choral works. So me, be, you know, being there and then, you know, being in, in Brahms' house where he lived in the second floor, not that far from where I lived, and uh, studying uh, and then learning what he has done with the choir, with the town, and then the church where he performed, and, and uh, me being in that residency and uh, traveling around Germany and France, Netherlands, uh, it's all brought that uh, overwhelming inspiration in terms of uh, I have to I have to document <laughs> this this much energy that I got uh, from Germany and uh, another thing is uh, it's still positive thing I wouldn't say it's negative that how much I missed Kansas mm -hmm. you know since I'm from Uzbekistan I'm from a sunny country mm -hmm. right and uh, when I moved to Kansas, I was so surprised how alike it is in so many ways, in the high plains and, and the, the sun and, and then the space. So uh, I miss that a lot. In Germany, especially in, in North Westphalia, around Dusseldorf and Köln, it's always, I would say, 300 days out of that whole year, it was rainy and dark. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so it's not something that I'm used to, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I start missing that. So crazily. one of the pieces that you've done here on the CD is kind of that tribute to Brahms then? From the inspiration you receive from being in that area then, maybe? It is, in a way. You know, b there are a combination of things. 
um, that year when I was there, besides, you know, being mm -hmm. right next to where Brahms lived, you know, I spent a uh, whole year studying Brahms, a lot of Brahms music, mm -hmm. uh, symphonies and uh, the sonatas. He has two sonatas mm -hmm. and I've recorded the, the first one in my previous CD. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I've been thinking about recording the second one, but this year was the perfect year. But the actual piece that was very strongly connecting all those things together, all those pieces together was uh, Ingrid Stolzel's Here and There. Mm -hmm. the, th the thing is, Ingrid is from Germany, from around Frankfurt and Baden-Baden. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, just like me, came to study in the US and the state, and he became uh, neutral. Uh, Naturalized, naturalized Americans, century. American, right? So mm -hmm. she is German American composer, uh -huh. and um, that year when I had that so much uh, connection to Germany, I was inspired. Mm -hmm. I, everything I want uh, uh, as a musician is there, you know. Mm -hmm. But something was missing that sun, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then uh, I had a conversation with Ingrid. I said, Ingrid, I feel so torn in both places. I want to be in both places, you know. Uh, one thing is that I'm so much, you know, uh, Americanized myself being mm -hmm. in Kansas and then now I'm in Germany that I always dreamed about, at, you know, going to Germany and living in Germany and learning the language and then I've always been fascinated by German philosophy and, and of course the composers. Uh, she said, you know, I had that too when I was younger, not, not anymore because, mm -hmm. you know, I've lived here so long now. Uh, and I've written a piece, it's called Here and There. And then uh, it's all about perspectives. If you think that word here and there, it's so, so close to each other, depending mm -hmm. on how you put the perspective, mm -hmm. the distance becomes shorter. And then uh, she, it's originally for violin and piano. And uh, you know, violin has a higher register. It has mm -hmm. a E string, which is uh, fifths higher than the viola register and uh, she showed me the score and then the played the piece for me and then I listened to it and I immediately connected to it. I said, Ingrid, this has to be a viola piece. I want to play it. How is it possible? It, it is impossible to play for viola because it's very high. Mm -hmm. She said, let me think about it. Maybe something is possible. And then I said, Ingrid, if you can uh, give a a new birth to this piece mm -hmm. and uh, make it viola piece, tra tr transpose it for viola. Don't simplify things, make it as complex as it is and uh, as high as viola can get uh, and I will play it. And then a little after a while she sends me the score and then here you go. And, and it is the world premiere it's basically. It's the world premiere uh -huh. piece of this, uh -huh. of this version of her piece. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and that, that expressed everything I was feeling at that moment. And obviously, m me spending so many years studying Brahms and uh, being in love with Brahms music, it cannot that I would forget to put Brahms' second viola sonata. It is originally for clarinet, but he himself transposed for viola. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you play Brahms and uh, you talk about Brahms, you cannot miss the connection between Schumann. So it's all interconnected. The Schumann piece uh, uh, based on a Grimm's fairy tale, I understand. Yes, mm -hmm. like many other romantic uh, composers at that time, they were all fascinated by supernatural world. Mm -hmm. You know, famous examples of uh, uh, operas and uh, so as uh, Wagner, so as uh, uh, Mendelssohn, they all were fascinated mm -hmm. by supernatural, right? So, so many pieces were written for it. And, uh, and Schumann, mm -hmm. s uh, the most imaginative, I'm not going to hesitate to say that, out of mm -hmm. all of that period, uh, was fascinated by Grimm Brothers stories. And then the, he created characters of these stories in music. And if you listen to it, mm -hmm. you can just connect to Rapunzel. Mm -hmm. or, uh, or other heroes, you know, mm -hmm. Hansel and Gretel, mm -hmm. and how they are running from the 
from the rich, mm -hmm. and, you know. So uh, it is inspired. And uh, in each moment, you can also hear the character of Clara, his wife, mm -hmm. that he was deeply in love with. And uh, he used this interval, la re, which is A and D, and it's Clara, you know. So uh, it, is, it is so interconnected between uh, each other, you know. Trained classical violinist, and yet uh, the viola is pretty special to you, too. It is, it is. I've, I've played, and I still continue playing, you know. Uh, but I'm known more professionally as a violist. Uh, in my early high school years, I discovered this instrument <laughs> due to my teacher who said, Shah, you have long fingers, bigger hands, you know. And uh, you have certain kind of voice that would connect with viola quite well. Why don't you try? I, I was so resistant. I said, no, oh. <laughs> you know. You know, how there are thousands of viola jokes, you know. And uh, um, at that time in the past, and of course these composers changed that uh, view that being a violist meant being a bad violinist. <laughs> Oh. And then that, that stayed with violas for so many years. Uh -huh. And uh, now we modern uh, violists and uh, so many other great violists mm -hmm. prove that it's not true. What know? turned you to the viola then? What made that decision to, yes, I'll pick up this instrument and begin to explore it? Um, Several. Uh, one thing is the, the the sound of the viola, definitely. You know, the voice of the viola. It's like a human being speaking mm -hmm. because viola sound is very close to human voice. Mm -hmm. Violin is very high. Mm -hmm. If you think about it. So um, another thing is that at that time, it, I wanted to win the national competition back in Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. and it happened annually once a year, and uh, I had about nine months to prepare, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, I wanted to participate. I wanted to win. Not only participate, I want to win. The ambition was big. And my teacher said, you know, there are so many violinists that will be competing in that. Mm -hmm. And that there are not many violists. Mm -hmm. uh, if you try the viola, and if you like it, and if you can prepare yourself to it, you might have a bigger chance. Mm -hmm. And she was absolutely correct. She foresee everything. And then I won the national competition, which gave me full right, full scholarship to go to National Conservatory. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like her vision was so big is that not only Viola gave me a chance to study in a conservatory with full scholarship, mm -hmm. but it also brought me to US mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, I had I instantly had connection with the instrument and then uh, produced something that was, uh, I guess, unique to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I could express myself better through the, the instrument. The uh, CD is uh, Stossel, Schumann, Brahms. This is your second one, isn't it? This is my second one of my solo CDs. And was first introduced uh, in the gala Mm -hmm. at uh, the opening concert for the Hayes Symphony, uh, was sold there, and uh, proceeds uh, were donated to the Hayes Symphony, basically, from uh, the, uh, the sale of the CD, uh, in large part. Now, where else can we get it now, since the gala has passed? Um, you still can get it uh, in our concerts, in Hayes Symphony concerts, mm -hmm. and the proceeds will continue being 50% mm -hmm. is donated to the uh, to the educational outreach and uh, uh, are musicians. you online so yet? We are online. <laughs> at the, um, it is on Amazon. It is on uh, mm -hmm. on all uh, iTunes and uh, um, what is the other one? That uh, all platforms. All, all platforms. Sound. Yes. Yes. Great. Yeah. And will still be available at future concerts. Then. It will be available at, at future uh, concerts for yeah. the and fifty percent of the proceeds will go to the Hayes Symphony. And by the way, we should mention that the Winter Vespers concert is coming up on Saturday, December 2nd, which will be held at St. Joseph Catholic Church in Hayes. There is the pre-concert talk from which we learn a lot about the music and uh, the musicians who perform. 
uh, at 7 p.m. The concert itself, Winter Vespers concert on December 2nd at 7.30 at St. Joseph Catholic Church in Hayes. The Assistant Professor of Music and Theater and Music Director of the Hayes Symphony Orchestra, Shah Sadikov, our community connection. For over 60 years, Eagle Communications has been the leader in value and service. And over that time, our specialized teams have been helping businesses grow because Eagle is your one stop for business solutions. We can provide the latest in hosted phone, reliable fiber internet, IT support, business compliance, and network planning. Plus, we offer affordable advertising on television, radio, and digital platforms. Call our employee owners today and let us serve you. Eagle Communications, our community connected.